Morning once again. Hey, two other quick things uh, that I wanted to let you guys know. Uh, we have, uh, there's a book that we have on the, in the back in the shelves. Uh, it's a book by Greg Glory. It's called Tell Someone How You Can Share the Good News. Maybe you've been af- kind of afraid. Hey, I don't know how to, what to say. I don't know what to do. Uh, I think I've shared this before, but Greg used to just go and read a tract to people on the beach. Just, that's how he started his evangelistic you know, ministry. Um, and this is, they're, they're on the back. They're, we got a really killer deal. They're free. And so take one. That means we're giving them, for, we, we paid for them, but they're free to you. Uh, take one seriously and, and, and read it with your family. Go over it, how to share the gospel. Second thing real quick before we get into the word. Um, I received another letter this week um, from somebody. It was on my chair last Sunday. It wasn't signed, so I'm not going to read it. I opened it up, looked at it. If this is from you, come talk to me afterwards. I get questions all the time and things uh, from people. But if you don't sign it, it's going in the trash. So just so you guys know, and just put that out there. Let's open our Bibles this morning to 2 Thessalonians, please. Chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's read verses 9 through 12, and then we'll pray. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion, <clears throat> that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let's pray. Lord, we come once again to you this morning, Lord, your children, your people, your church, your bride. And we ask that as we open up your word, Lord, you would soften our hearts afresh to receive your word. And that we would learn, that we would grow, that we would be challenged, convicted, Lord, if need be. And even born again of your spirit this morning, if that's your desire, Lord, for us. We lift up each person here, those watching, those listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're visiting here this morning, I'd like just to remind you that we're normally we go through the on Sunday mornings, we're going through a book of the Bible verse by verse, and we finished our last study, and we're just taking a small, a small break and, and going over a series that we're calling Last Day's Truth and Encouragement. And this morning, is we're looking at part six, is the strong delusion. And even as we come here and we look there in verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they may all be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, it's interesting that notice that we look up in verse 9, and it says the coming of the lawless one. And along with that will be, notice in verse 10, all unrighteous deception. And then in verse 11, God will also send a strong delusion. Now, we also notice that these it will not happen for Christians. This will be uh, basically for those who are not Christian. But it will also be a time before the Antichrist comes, or the, the lawless one. Notice with the working of Satan. Now, again, some, will, some say today that this will not happen, that the great or that this delusion, this strong delusion, will not happen until the Antichrist is revealed. Yet that's not what it says here. If you notice there in verse 8, we see that Paul is writing about the lawless one being revealed, yet he then kind of takes a step back and says, hey, this is in the future, the coming lawless one. And so he then goes on to tell us that, you know, basically these things will be proceeding as well as coming along with the lawless one. Again, notice coming lawless one is in the future tense. 
So basically, that in, in you know, the times that will be coming, there will be many things according to the working of Satan that will be coming before and during his time upon the earth. Now, I do believe that the main delusion will come during the Great Tribulation. I think that's what this is saying. But it also, because it is future tense, shows that this will be happening before he comes as well. Basically kind of preparing the way, if you will. Now, again, here within our text, we're really going to be zeroing in on verse 11 there, where for this reason God will send on them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. But let's look again back at verse 9. It says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all uh, power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So again there in verse 9, we see that the lawless one, and it's interesting how we had spoke, we, we taught about how lawlessness would be increasing in the last days. And so also in his lawlessness, lawlessness, Jesus said, increases in the last days. We will also see the lawless one come, working with the power of Satan. Notice it says here, with all power, signs, lying wonders. And he will also bring with him an unrighteous deception. Now we note in verse 10 that this deception is, you know, and delusion basically, notice it says, are for those who perish, or those who are perishing. So again, this means that believers in Jesus Christ, those who love the truth, his truth, who, those who love Jesus, who is the truth, will not be deceived and suffer this delusion. Now that does not mean we don't have to be careful. Matter of fact, we do have to be careful not to be caught up in some of the delusion that will be coming and believe the lies that are coming down the pike. Now, we must also note that this delusion will be a spiritual delusion. Basically, you know, that the only, it's the only thing that makes sense because, again, the Lord through the Apostle Paul here is warning of spiritual things, uh, you know, that will equal as well moral things. Thus, this delusion will be about godly things, about true things, about moral and biblical things. All those things will be deluded in this time. And we are told the reason, notice there in verse 10, the reason that this deception and strong delusion will come. Look at verse 10, in the last part it says, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they may be saved. And then look at verse 11. In order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So these are those who will not receive the truth. They will not believe the truth. And instead they have pleasure in unrighteousness. You know, we have to watch ourselves, guys and gals. Are we finding pleasure in truth, the, uh, the truth of God's word? Are we finding pleasure in, in God and his word, in Jesus Christ our Lord? Does he bring joy to your heart? Does he bring a spring to your step every time you, you sing a song or you just lift up prayer or just look outside and see the beauty he's given us? Or do you rejoice more in unrighteousness? Do you like to watch certain movies or t television shows or listen to certain kind of music that is unrighteous? Be careful. We need to be careful because, again, these people that, that, that do not love the truth, that do not believe the truth, and instead have pleasure in unrighteousness, they are condemned to hell for all eternity. And there will come a time, as we see within our text here, that God will firm up their decision. Now, I have no doubt that there are some here this morning, you've been flirting with the world, maybe in the world, you think nobody knows, nobody sees, God sees. And be careful, because one day the Lord, you know, because I believe he's coming soon, may just confirm that decision that you're making. And, and, you know, again, it says that these people basically will be condemned, condemned to hell for all eternity, separated from God, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, so again, these are the people that they, they you know, reject the truth, they do not love the truth, and have pleasure in unrighteousness. Just keep your finger there. We'll be coming back here many times. Please turn with me back to John chapter 3. 
where Jesus says this a different way. And again, it's, we've read this scripture many times, but it's so pertinent with this. John chapter 3, starting in verse 18. John 3, verse 18. This is Jesus speaking. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. So notice, they know the truth of God, but they reject the truth of God. They know the truth of Jesus Christ, yet they reject it. They reject Jesus Christ himself, they reject the light, because we're told here they love the darkness. Anybody here love the darkness a little too much this morning? And, and hey, I know we're not going to raise our hands. We're not telling anybody that we're loving the darkness, but we need to be careful. They also reject the word of God. Because that is the truth of God. This is the truth of God. So they reject it on many different levels. They reject his people. These are those, again, who love darkness, love their sin, love their lies, and love unrighteousness. They love it. They won't turn away from it. They do it, like, again, if it's within the church, they're doing it in secret. If it's in the world, they're just, it's, hey, it's right out there for everybody to see. These are those who reject the truth of God and exchange it for a lie. These are those who are doing what is right in their own eyes. Turn with me, please, to the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. as we see something very similar to what we're reading here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, as well as what we just read with Jesus there in John chapter 3. Now I'm going to be reading this morning this portion of Scripture out of the New Living Translation, um, just because I want to get a different slant on it, because sometimes we can become, I think, a little too familiar with our own translation. So Romans 1, starting in verse 18. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. Notice, when somebody says they don't believe in God, we see here that the Bible says they're lying. They know the truth of God because he has made it obvious to them, and, and this is how in verse 20, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Though through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. So again, as we look at creation all around us, as we look at the, the universe in, in these radical ways, God is revealing his power, his majesty. Look at verse 21. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or give him, even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. Verse 23, instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. Boy, if this isn't going around, on around us today, again, not just in the United States, but all over, the, all over the world, it's crazy. Look at verse 24, so, or therefore, or because of this, God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. So again, they rejected God. All right, so therefore God has abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts have desired. 
As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. So again, note that, that these things are the basically a curse of rejecting God, the result of rejecting God. That they then go forth and do whatever shameful things with one another's bodies. Look at verse 25. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshipped and served the things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. I love how Paul throws that in there. He's like, dude, I can even just see him putting his pen down. It's like, worthy of eternal praise. Amen, Lord, you are. Verse 26. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. And again, now we see what this looks like as, as they're abandoned to their own desires, as they've rejected God. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Sound familiar, anyone, today? As our country wants a Christian nation, hey, I'm not saying a perfect nation, and those around the world have rejected God, we see these sins becoming more and more prevalent around the globe. Look at verse 28. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, now, just real briefly right there. They thought it foolish to acknowledge God. Do you know, was it back in 2008, I believe it was, maybe 2007, the Democratic Party took God out of their platform as a belief. If you've seen any of the, the last couple of years, the confirmation hearings, the Democrats have been making fun of any nominee that actually believes in God. Notice, they thought it foolish to acknowledge God. Notice what goes on. He abandoned them to their foolish thinking, and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives become full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarrel, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. Sounds like Hollywood, doesn't it? They are backbiters, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, have no mercy. Verse 32, they know God's justice requires that those who do such things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Again, does this sound familiar to anyone here? I mean, it's, it's, it's like we're reading from the headlines of what's going on today within our world. And again, lest we think this is happening just in the United States, it's happening all over the world. But again, we see just even just the natural thing in Romans 1, we see in, in John chapter 3 that those who love the light, those who love unrighteousness have been turned over. Those who reject God have been turned over to their own ways, to their own vileness. One commentator said it like this, <clears throat> The strong delusion is both a punishment of God and the moral result for their rejection of God and the truth. Let me say that again. The strong delusion is both a punishment of God and the moral result for their rejection of God and the truth. And as, again, as we just read that, it ties in with what it says here in Romans, what Jesus said there in John chapter 3. And so as we come back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we then see that this strong delusion is actually twofold. It is a result of John 3, Romans 1, the re rejection of God. But we also see that it is a punishment from God in the last days. It is a firming up of their heart. Basically, the Lord is confirming their own choices, making them firm. Again, these are those that continually reject God, His Son, His Word, His truth, and harden themselves against the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, but look at verse 10, back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 10 reads, notice at the beginning it says, <clears throat> and with all unrighteous deception. So now we have a third element that's coming in. 
We have God's pronouncement of, you know, of judgment from Romans 1 as they reject God in John chapter 3. We have the, you know, basically the strong delusion, but now we also have all unrighteous deception. Another version says this, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. Deceiving. So again, we see three forms of deception and delusion. And notice there in verse 10, it says, They did not receive a love of the truth that they may be saved. They did not believe the truth, verse 11, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know, again, we live in a world that is growing more and more in their pleasure in unrighteousness. It's, it's honestly getting more and more disgusting and more vile all the time. It's, it's getting crazy. As we studied a few weeks ago, as it was in the days of Noah, people's thoughts are just on wickedness continually, as it was in the days of Lot, as we see certain sins so prevalent and being held up within our culture, within our world. And again, this all now so radically ties together. For this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. Now we're really just looking at strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Strong delusion here in the Greek. There is uh, from two different Greek words. Strong from the Greek word energia. It's where we get our word energy from. Literally means strong, working, using, basically when they used that word, it was only speaking of a superhuman power. So that's how powerful that this delusion is going to be. It's going to be a super powerful delusion. Now delusion here is planes in the Greek. Basically means straying from orthodoxy, deceit, delusion, error, false judgment, or false opinion. In an active sense, it means deceit, fraud, seduction to error, and sin. Turn with me, please, to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, as we see the same word being used. Second Peter chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 15 because it's an interesting thing. As Peter is writing about the end days as well. 2 Peter 3 verses 15 through 18. It says, And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks to them, in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. Boy, do we see that happening within the church today. Verse 17, You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawlessness. The word error there is the same word delusion in the Greek. Be careful. We are to be careful that we are not carried away with the error, error of lawless people. Notice again, it's talking about lawlessness, lawlessness and lose your own stability. Verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge <coughs> of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. In 1 John, you don't have to turn there, but in 1 John 4, 6, we see the same word used from the Greek. We are of God. He that knoweth God hear us, heareth us, and he that does not heareth us does not know God. Hereby we know that we, the spirit, excuse me, hereby we know that we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error or the spirit of delusion. As we are Christians, we need to be walking in the truth and the light of the word of God. So we're not caught up in these errors, not caught up in these delusions. Again, the Lord sends this strong delusion. Again, delusion, straying from orthodoxy, deceit, delusion, false judgment. Do we see any false judgment going on today? I mean, look around. It goes on to say back in our text here in 2 Thessalonians that they should believe the lie. Another translation said, 
translates it thus, it says, Because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them, so God will cause them to be greatly deceived, and they will believe these lies. In a paraphrase, it says this, And since they're so obsessed with evil, God rubs their noses in it, gives them what they want. Since they refuse to trust truth, they're banished to their chosen world of lies and illusions. That's, that reminds me of the world we're living in today. Lies and illusions. Hey, this person said it on the news. That person said it from the stage. This musician, it must be true. But again, notice this strong delusion. And they will believe more readily the lies of the enemy. And again, since this is one of the signs we're to be looking for in the last days, let's take a moment now to look around us. You know, do most people in the world seem to be deluded, you know, to the truth? Do most people seem obsessed with evil and ungodly things? Do we see a lot of lies and illusions that the masses are believing? George Orwell, 1984. Crazy. So many within our own country and within the world seem so deceived. Their lies their lies are so many, they're not making sense anymore. Anybody else picking up on this? It's, it's literally, they're, they're colliding with their own false truths and false facts. And yet because so many people are so deluded, they never even take the time to look. Now, we're going to look at this just a moment, and you're going to get a sense with where I'm going with this, okay? But again, we're only tossing the proverbial stone across the surface. We could go like crazy on some of this stuff. Back in the 1800s, a huge lie was set forth, so crazy that only a few throughout the recorded history of mankind for 6,000 years ever believed such a thing. This lie, that there was no God. Go back, study your ancient culture, study your ancient history, study world history. You know, you can go to little, you'll find tribes in the deepest, darkest part of Africa. Guess what they do? They worship God. A God, a lot of false gods, obviously, most of the time. Sometimes it's just like Romans 1, they're worshiping what, what's been revealed to them. But the point is, th this is done, has, ha, was done universally, almost universally, throughout all the history of the world. But there was a theory that was placed forth and basically said there was no God, it, that we didn't come to be because God created us. It was because this, of a thing called evolution. And even in the 1800s, many within the church accepted these lies as facts and changed their theology to try to match what so-called science was coming up with. And so they could do what a man named Darwin had said and match what he had said. Yet all these years later, this lie is still being propagated throughout the world. Not even as theory anymore or a low-grade hypothesis, which it really is, but as fact, as truth. Now, there are many uh, in our, I mean, most of the people in the world believe this. Or, or at least it's growing in that direction. But and maybe even some here believe in, in evolution. You know, there are people here who believe in, or not maybe here, but maybe so, but within Christianity, they believe in theistic evolution. Again, but basically put, so these are people who believe that nothing could create something. That's the basis of evolution, that nothing created something. It's, 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 kind of, it's very silly when you really just think of the starkness of it. But again, this is what happens today when so many within academics propagate this lie as a fact. It begins to mess, though, with their humanistic and sinful truths that continue to develop. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. Please stay with me. I'm not trying to go too far into the weeds here. But let's take a side turn, just take evolution, let's put it up here for just a moment because we're going to come back to it. Now, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, another thing that was happening in the 1800s, there were other academics that came up with a word they described as a mental disorder. In the late 1880s, they came up with this word called homosexual. They diagnosed it as, you know, a mental disorder in their words. And again, as this specific word finally made its way into the mainstream public, 
maybe into the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, because, again, it was just used within psychological circles. It also made it into the Bible for the first time. Thus, there have been many uh, of those today that say this word was not even in the Bible until the 1940s, and in a way, they would be correct. Yet what they neglect to tell you is that the word homosexual wasn't even in a word before then. There was no such word as the, in the English language as homosexual before these times. They don't tell you either that in the Hebrew and the Greek, and not needed to go into the Aramaic, they already had words to describe this new English word homosexual, and had used other words throughout history to translate them into English effeminate and other such words again effeminate meant something different as it does today now to continue with their great delusion homosexuality was deemed back actually in the early 1800s or <clears throat> even late 1700s as a mental disorder by the way do a study on what they used to do to homosexuals to try to cure them forget leave religion aside really wicked stuff they used to do in so, uh, according to psychology today, in 1968, there's a thing called the DSM. If you've heard of that, it was the DSM-2 in 1968. It's basically the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM. It's basically the Bible for psychologists. See, this is what has all their mental disorders in there, what, you know, what they are, what, what to treat, and all this stuff. And in it, homosexuality was listed, 1968, as a mental disorder. Now, here's the interesting part. In 1976, the American Psychiatric Association asked its members that were attending the convention this year, notice it was only those that were at the convention, we don't know how many did not go, but they asked them to vote on whether or not they believed homosexuality to be, be a mental disorder or not. 5,854 voted to remove it from the DSN as a mental disorder. 3,810 voted to retain it in the DSM as a mental disorder. So as a compromise, they changed it and called it sexual orientation disturbance for many years. Now then in 1987, they completely dropped it from the DSM. Meanwhile, it took the World Health Organization, WHO, until 1992 to remove it from their paperwork. Now here's the most interesting thing to me, that what we just looked at. That these men and women of science, remember that's what they put this forth as, science and facts, didn't use any science to prove or disprove their conclusions. Hey, let's take a vote. What do you guys think? That's what they did. They took a vote using their opinions. Today, though, they teach and pontificate and talk as if it's established science that people are sim simply homosexual or not in a quote actually from American Psychology or Psychiatric Association, they say this now. They use affirmative therapy, and I quote, which encourages gay people to accept their sexual orientation, unquote. No science included. Can anyone say delusional? This is taught in our schools, guys and gals, from now from grade school all the way up to university, that this is normal, that this is scientific fact, and it's not scientific fact at all. How about cross-dressers? That's what we used to be, be called, or transgender people. This, too, is considered a mental disorder in the DSM by so-called doctors and scientists, by the way, up until last year with the WHO the World Health Organization. But again, they announced their decision to take it out, and they said this, Dr. Lael Say, and I quote, it was taken out from the mental health disorders because we had a better understanding that this was not actually a mental health condition, and leaving it there was causing stigma. Do you guys hear any studies that were cited? Any scientific evidence that's put forth? Now, it was in the DSM as a mental disorder all the way until December of 2012. Now, think about this. Even when they took it out, even as the WHO did last year, there was no scientific evidence as it was no, why they were no longer classifying these as mental disorders. None. No scientific studies. No scientific reason. 
Yet these people again act as if they themselves for the last hundred years did not classify homosexuality and transgenderism as mental disorders. They forget all about that. Do you ever notice that? Never brought up. Now on top of that, when, when they say they are no longer mental disorders and, and they give no reason why, it's still accepted as normal with, with most people. There might even be some, be some people here getting their feathers ruffled. Hey, I'm not trying to ruffle feathers. I'm trying to give you truth. Too many of us believe the, the, the delusion. Now, let's go back to Darwin for a moment, shall we? Let's go back to Darwin. A basic premise for evolution. And again, I'm not trying to get too far into the weeds, so I'm kind of keeping it if you're saying, well, we could get really scientific. We could, but we're not. Look, the basic premise for evolution is natu natural selection. The survival of the fittest. Okay? Only the strong survive or the most fit survive. One, de one defined it this way. Modern evolutionary theory defines fitness not by how long an organis organism lives, but by how successful it is at reproducing. The survival of the fittest, the natural selection. Wait a minute, homosexuals cannot reproduce. Homosexuals actually have a lower lifespan, amongst the, especially amongst the males, by some 20 plus years. And it's the same for transgenders, by the way, which their suicide rate is at least twice that of the rest of the population. Neither lifestyle, by the way, what God calls sin, both those lifestyles, propagates the species of humanity, and thus, according to Darwin's theory, which again, everybody says they believe, they should be rejected. This, both lifestyles should be rejected according to science. Again, the same science that believes in evolution should reject this, but they don't. They simply change their truths. They reject and change their science as the society, their own sinful lusts, and those in charge dictate. Can I have an amen? You with me? Amen? Amen. Let me share what, a quote from Psychology Today. I'm talking about transgenders for just a moment again. What are sex chromosomes? Each human cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes that carry DNA within their nucleus. <coughs> Excuse me. The X and the Y chromosomes are one such pair. They determine the biological sex, reproductive organs, and sexual characteristics that develop in a person. Female, XX. Mammals inherit one X chromosome from each parent, but males, XY, receive an X from their mother and an X or a Y chromo sex chromosome from their father. The science is hard and fast. The, the science is irrefutable. Yet there are those out there in this sin, or those, you know, again, remember, these are those who were labeled with a mental disorder just a few years ago, some just last year, are now telling us that there's actually countless genders. And it doesn't matter what sex you're born, they say. You can decide whatever gender you want to be on your own. Again, as they seek to redefine and confuse the meaning of words. Can anyone say delusion? Remember, just a quick number. 99.93% of the, of the U.S. population <coughs> claim to be male and female. 99.93, so that means 0.07% of the population claims to be transgender. Did you know that? Less than 3% of the population is, is, claims to be homosexual. But you'd think that homosexuals are probably 30 or 40% by the way it's put forth by our media, by the world. You'd think that transgender has to be at least 20%. 0.07%. Again, with, 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 yet without... Absolutely no science, not even psychology behind them. They're now teaching this in our schools as normal. They have them come into the libraries and moms and dads, oh man, just the sweet moms and dads bring their children in to be read stories by transgender guys. And by the way, I've never seen a transgender gal doing this. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Matter of fact, the, they, they, they caught two of the ones that were doing this in, in library back, I believe it was in Austin, Texas, that actually ha had been um, 
convicted of child molestation. And here they are in a library teaching children reading. And by the way, if you ever go on, they're not just reading, they're dancing around doing all this disgusting, immoral stuff. But again, the people are just following along. These, by the way, these same, the transgender community, there are some within are actually calling to let their children see naked people in sex acts so they can learn and grow. And again, that's what it's all being done under the guise of is learning and growing. There are now groups of pedophiles out there today. Pedophilia, by the way, is still considered a mental disorder for now. Who want to be considered, these pedophiles want to jo join the LGBTQRSTUV community. And if the Lord tarries, I believe this will come soon. And you know why? It has to. They're seeking to normalize pedophilia. They're, they're, down in, I, I have pictures of signs down in Oregon you know, where people are you know, normalize pedophilia. And, and here's why. They, they have to because, again, the science doesn't add up. Or the non-science is what I call it. Because, again, if they say some are born gay, others are born, you know, the opposite sex of what they really are, then, then they have to, without science, they have to logically ex accept pedophiles. Because they're born that way, too. Or, you know, so are others who have any other sexual perversion. They're born that way. Again, can you say delusion? How about another delusion is abortion? Another delusion within our culture is abortion. Let's state up front <clears throat> that this too, by the way, goes against Darwin's theory of evolution. Because it's not propagating the, the species. Not with it one, between 1 and 1 1.2 million babies aborted every year just in the United States alone. By the way, the, the leading cause of death in the whole world, abortion. Leading cause of death in the United States, abortion. Now, abortion is not a human right. Abor abortion is the murder of an unwanted and unborn baby. And 98 plus percent of the time, it's not to, to, for the mother to be saved. It's not because of rape. It is for the convenience and for birth control. You getting that? So that means 980,000 babies at least every year are, are basically aborted because of birth control for convenience. Not a good time. You know, I thought, how would it be, by the way, if I put an ad out in the paper or something on Facebook or Instagram and said, hey, can anybody help me because our dog got pregnant and we want to abort the babies, the puppies. We can't do it. We can't, we can't support the puppies. We just don't have the finances, so I need somebody to abort the babies for my puppy, or, you know, for our dog. How many people would be outraged? I'm not kidding. People would come out of the woodworks. With, and maybe, again, if you're soft on abortion here or even pro-abortion, if you just got mad at that scenario, you know, and you're not mad that they do it to human beings in the womb? Do you see the idiocy? Well, they'll say, people say, well, you don't have to afford the, the puppies. I'll take the puppies, right? That's what they'd say. You know how many people say, I'll take the baby, don't abort the baby? I'll say that to this whole place today. I'll say it to the radius, whatever. To Lee and I, will ta we'll take your baby if you're going to abort your baby. Don't do it. And one quick side note, I always like to say this. If you've had an abortion, there is forgiveness at the cross of Jesus Christ. Hey, if you're a homosexual, you're transgender, even if you're going to, hey, there is power at the cross, there's forgiveness at the cross, just like there's forgiveness for all the other sins that we've all committed. But again, this is all part, I'm putting this forth as part of the lie. Again, these mental giants, they'll call the baby in the womb a fetus and think that they're doing baby better because they don't want to call it baby. Yet what they don't understand is the fetus in the Latin means baby in the womb. It's crazy. They'll say, well, it's not a baby. Well, what is it then? A walrus? A cat? An eagle? No, wait, it can't be an eagle because eagle legs are protected, right? Wait, why are eagle eggs protected? If, why, if it's only a fetus inside the egg, why are they protected, but babies inside the womb aren't? Can anybody here say delusion? These are also those who are deluded about the things we've just talked about. They don't think that there's sins to be repented of. Homosexuality, transgenderism, and abortion. 
They also say that sex outside of marriage is not a sin. No, it, it's actually hooking up. It's a fling. It's, a, it's shacking up. It's an extramarital affair. It's, affair. it's getting busy. You ever notice today under the delusion that people aren't drunks today? They're alcoholics with the disease. Or how about this? You know, over the last 20 to 30 years, especially over the, the, the last 10 years, all these things have just, they're, they're coming in, the things that we've talked about, just like crazy. Um, even within the church, and the things, people don't gossip anymore. There's no such thing. They just talk about the concerns they have about other people. Hey, worshiping other gods is not a sin, they'll say. Or they'll say there are no gods and worship themselves or worship one another. We live in such a lawless time when, when it, again, good is being called evil and evil is being called good. Delusion. They say that the Bible is bad, but their opinion is good. And that this many within, there, there's many within the church that say this today too. I just was reading an article. I was telling the guys before church that, hey, you know, uh, one of those television shows, The Bachelorette or Bachelor, whatever it is, and, and the main lady, the star, claims to be a Christian, and yet she's fornicating all around. She's having sex all around, and she says, I'm still a Christian. I'm forgiven by the grace of God. I'm, God loves me. And then I also read another article last night about a, you know, a professor at a seminary back east. She's actually the president of this long seminary. I think it's been there 180 years. And she says she doesn't believe the Bible is the word of God. She doesn't believe in the virgin birth. She doesn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. She doesn't believe Jesus died for our sins. And she says she's a Christian. And she's the president of a theological seminary. But in their opinion, hey, you know what? What I believe is better than the Bible. Because I know more. I've read more books written by people. It makes no sense. And then we also, here, here's another one. We live in a time when so-called intellectuals in California are penalizing citizens for not having medical insurance, yet they don't penalize non-citizens for the same crime. Matter of fact, they want to give them free health care. Now, don't think this is political. I don't care about the politics. I'm talking about the delusion. That, what I just said doesn't make sense. It's delusional. And a matter of fact, every Democratic candidate on the stage a couple days ago in their debate said they'd do the same thing. How about this? There are actors, you know, people who are actors, and they pretend to commit murders. They pretend to commit adultery. They pretend to fornicate and shoot guns and on the screen and at home, yet most of them are drunkards. Most of them are adulterers and fornicators, murderers of babies and drug abusers. Matter of fact, the last few years, we found out that many of them are even rapists. Many of them are child molesters. I remember Andy Rooney. Anybody remember Andy Rooney? He came out a few years ago saying, hey, before he died, I was molested many times as a child actor. Other guys, Corey Hames and others. Says, you know, Corey Hames says his friend Corey Feldman killed himself because of the molestation going on. with. But the names are so big, nobody wants to approach them. And then think about it again. The delusion is these same people are out there telling everyone how moral they are. And how we should be all living our lives. And, and people listen. Can you say delusion? There are others who call themselves Antifa, meaning they're against fascism, and yet they're fascist. Hey, that's okay. It doesn't matter. I mean, sincerely, how about global warming? Now, some may he here may think that global warming is actually happening. Perhaps it is. But from the research I've read and watched, it all seems to be made up by the government and the wealthy in power to get more power over us and to get more money. When guys like Al Gore do a movie in 2000, what, six was it? You know, a, an inconvenient truth. And then all his inconvenient truths end up being inconvenient lies. But he just happens to be heavily invested in AT&T and other, or not AT&T, GE, and other companies that, by the way, when you buy the, the credits, the, the guess where you're buying credits from? People like GE and others. So guess who makes money then? Al Gore and others just like him. 
And again, a lot of the research that I've read on global warming and watched, it's a lot of, I mean, there's two scientists even more in, in England that got caught a year or two ago lying, complete lies. Did it make world news? No, it was just kind of on the side, on a back page. Because again, they said, well, we lied because we wanted more money, more grant money. And that's the kind of thing. It was interesting. I saw a fascinating interview with the scientist who founded the Weather Channel many years ago. And he was saying that global warming was only being propagated by the scientists who were receiving grants from the governments to say it was true. And it was funny because the host, you can even go online and watch this, the host uh, of the CNN w was interviewing me and said, well, I believe in global warming. And, and the scientist asked, well, are you a scientist? And the guy goes, no. And he goes, yeah, I didn't think so. Because again, now let me state, by the way, I hate pollution. I, we recycle at our home, you know, and, and we are to be good stewards of this planet, okay? But again, we need to be careful about who and what we believe today and not fall into the, to the delusion. The worst polluting countries uh, in the world are for plastics are China, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, and Thailand. For air, Pakistan, Qatar, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Iran. Now, good luck going and finding those stats because I can't even verify if those stats are true. Because a lot of um, companies are making money now blaming the United States. Let's get rid of the straws. You been down to Oregon lately? You have to ask for a straw now if you're down there. Can't give you a straw. Do you want a straw? Here, and, and on this whole thing, you know, in 1970, a guy named Paul Ehrlich said this. Between 1980 and 1989, some 4 billion people, including 65 million Americans, would perish in the great die-off. You see, when I was a kid in the 70s, a teen, it was, they were saying it was going to be global cooling. Now in 2006, Al Gore said humans may only have 10 years left to save the planet from turning into a total frying pan. And he said, within 10 years, here's a quote, Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa would be free of snow. Guess what? It has a nice, healthy snowpack on it. He said a lot of other lies. 2019, Alessandria Ocasio-Cortez said this, Congresswoman, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And what is climate change? It gives them power. It gives them money. What is it to them? Let's give us your money. But again, even, but again where the delusion comes in is, is whether it's climate change, whether it's feeding the hungry in the whole world, you know, let's, let's just have our borders be wide open because there's so many hurting people. Hey, there are so many hurting people, but you know why they're hurting? Because of corrupt governments. So the only way to stop pollution, the only way to stop global starving is to go in and replace all the governments and have a one world order. Guess what it's setting up to? But we're all under this strong delusion. Or not us, hopefully. Hopefully we're kind of keeping up. You know, there are those who even delusionally, delusionally are calling Christians fascists, Nazis, and haters. Why? And I quote, because it's okay to do violence against a Nazi or a hater or a fascist. That's what's coming for us if the Lord tarries. They're the same people who are calling for tolerance and love, and yet they're, mo they're most intolerant and unloving people on the planet. Again, I could go on. I had just all this stuff about, I mean, just this delusion. There's delusion within Christianity of those who's who say that they're Christians, and, and they'll, they'll say, like Jesus said in verse uh, Luke 6, 46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you to do? Now, you know, again, we could even, you know, come to, to ourselves. What, what are we doing or not doing that God has told us to do or not to do as Christians? How many men here are leading your families as God has commanded you to do? Or how many men here are leaving it up to our wives to do? How many wives know better than their husbands and not submitting to their husbands because they know better than their husbands? I know that it's happening even within our fellowship. I know that many of us here aren't serving here at the fellowship. And you're under the delusion that it's okay. You're under the delusion it's okay not to love my wife as Christ loved the church. It's okay not to, to submit to my husband and to the Lord. It's okay to treat my children like garbage. It's okay not to pray. It's okay not to read my Bible. No, you're under a delusion, guys and gals. 
We need to repent. We need to wake up as we talked about before. Be careful. I like how another translation says that in verse uh, Luke 6. It's a paraphrase. Jesus speaking, he says, Why are you so polite with me and always say, Yes, sir, and that's right, sir, but never do a thing I tell you to do. Guys and gals, we need to be those who are examining ourselves. And the only way to survive during this strong delusion is to be men and women of the Word of God. Men and women who are so in love with Jesus that we want to know more and more about Him. We want to please Him. Psalm 119, I'm going to close by reading a few of these things just to encourage us. Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 1828, For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Psalm 198, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much more than fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Can I have an amen? Hey, for those of you who love the word out there, that's what it is to you. This is, I would get, take everything from me. You cannot have this. Kill me. Psalm 119, 98. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. The unfolding of your word gives light. Psalm 119, 130. It imparts understanding to the simple. Proverbs 6, 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Now let's close all together, please, by turning to 1 Peter chapter 1. Or excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1. I love this as far as how we, we stay firm, how we stand, how we are not deluded, and that can only be as we're walking in love with Jesus Christ in accordance to his word. 2 Peter chapter 1, start, verses 19 through 21. I'm going to read again out of the New Living. I don't normally do this, but again, it's something different. It gives us a little bit of a different flavor. So, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day comes. And Christ, the morning star, shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human uh, initiative. No, these prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit, and they spoke from God. This is how we stand firm. This is how we remain undiluted in this world. Let's pray. Lord, as we come once again to your table to feast, Lord, and we see such a strong delusion out there, Lord, we pray for those in the world. We pray, Lord, that they would see their sins, be convicted of their sins, and repent and find new life in you, Lord Jesus. Turn away from the darkness into your light, Lord. We pray for those here. Lord, I pray for each one of us here. I don't care how holy we think we are or how lost we think we are. Lord, would we come anew, afresh to you this morning? Lord, would you search our hearts and see if there be any wicked ways, Lord? And there are wicked ways in every one of our hearts here this morning, Lord. And I pray that we would all repent from them and go deeper in love with you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand.